Hi everybody, welcome to English 247. My name is Lillian Ruiz, and I wanted to tell you a little bit in this video about our class, Women in Literature 1. I wanted to review our syllabus and our course outline, and I also wanted to give you a sense of what we will be doing in future classes. So, um, I should first tell you that there is a thunderstorm going on outside, so I'm hoping that we don't lose electricity during this presentation. And I wanted to direct you to our Moodle site, and I'm assuming you know how to get onto our Moodle site if you are watching this video. And basically, you can see that there are a number of colored icons under the general section. The first is blue and it's entitled Syllabus and Other Documents. This is where I have posted our syllabus, our course outline, and any other documents that I would normally distribute in a face-to-face -face class. And then you can see the icon underneath that is pink. It says due dates, and those due dates are included in your course outline, but I also wanted to separate them out and put them in a separate icon so that you could easily find them. Past class sessions. So what will happen is I will have each week's class uh, or classes readily available on the front page of our Moodle site. When that week has elapsed, I will retire that week and I will put it in the past class sessions icon so that you can access that throughout the semester. But basically what you will view on our Moodle homepage is the current week that we are on. Discussion form, and that's an orange icon that's underneath past class sessions. So in the discussion form is where you have the opportunity to respond to uh, questions that I will be posing throughout the semester. I call them attendance questions, and I'll talk a little bit more about them in a few moments. So this is your way to basically engage in class discussion. Um, if we were in a face-to-face -face class, obviously you would do that orally. Here, you're doing that electronically. There are also two optional icons, one in green entitled optional chat, which is just that. So if you ever wanted to have a chat session with your classmates or with me or both, um, we could utilize the optional chat. There also is an optional zoom and that's a blue icon. That's the last icon under the general section. And that gives you my zoom information. If it so happens that you ever wanted to zoom with me. And you can see that what I've got posted is our first week. And I suspect that many of you are watching this video on Wednesday, the 22nd, because that's when the summer session begins. Now, what I try to do is to post videos um, of class sessions when our class would normally meet in a face-to-face -face situation. And we would normally meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays in a face-to-face -face situation. So while you might be accessing this video on Wednesday, maybe even Tuesday night, um, I intended for Thursday because basically I will be posting a video every Tuesday and Thursday, which I'll talk about a little bit more. And you can see that our topic is introduction. So basically I just plan on introducing the class. And what I would suggest you do is that you go to the syllabus and other documents folder and read what the syllabus is about and what the course outline is about. Perhaps even print it. I'm a dinosaur, I like paper. And this is what I'm going to review now with you, the syllabus and other documents folder. Um, and I'll begin with the syllabus where you can see that it begins with listing English 247, Women in Literature 1 at the top. So basically we are reading female authors from the 1800s. And this is our summer session one. So summer session begins in May and it ends approximately mid-July. We do the same amount of work at we would normally do in a 16 week semester, uh, semester, but obviously the summer is condensed. So we're doing twice as much work. My um, name on there is Lillian Ruiz. Uh, most students call me Lillian, I'm pretty informal but you can call me whatever you feel comfortable with. My email is there, which is my surname, Ruiz, R-U-I-Z, 
at gcc.mass.edu. You might notice that my email does not include a first initial. Um, the reason why is because, believe it or not, when I first was issued an email address at GCC, GCC hadn't instituted a first initial. In fact, I had already been at GCC for a bit of time before email was introduced across the campus. I started at GCC in 1993. It's, it's stunning how quickly the years go by. But if you see somebody with an email address that's just their surname, basically that means they've been at GCC for quite a long time prior to the email system. My phone is there. Now I'm not on campus obviously because this is an online class, but I will be checking my phone messages. My office is in North 328A in the Inclusion and Diversity Center. Um, again, I suspect this probably won't be relevant if you're taking this as an online class, but I wanted to give you that information and note that my office hours are by appointment so that if you did want to meet with me via office hours, we could do it in any of a number of ways. My suspicion is that electronically would be best for you because you're taking this as an online class. Um, there is the possibility of perhaps arranging an in-person meeting depending on availability. Um, we could um, interact via phone or Zoom or email or all of the above if you wanted to. So the textbooks for the class, and if you've had an opportunity to go through the bookstore, they should have copies of the book, but the reality is that you can use any edition of any of the texts. I order texts from Signet Classic. They are a very reputable book publisher. Another reputable book publisher is Penguin, if you've ever seen any of their texts. But certainly you're not required to use those texts, so if you have your own or access to others, you can use those. Obviously our page numbers will be different because we'll be doing or using different editions, but Ultimately, because all of these texts are in the public domain, I've also been able to find websites for the books that we will be reading over the course of the semester. And you'll see in our course outline, which I'll get to shortly, I've listed all of those websites as well. I personally like paper, um, so I like being able to interact with the book, but there isn't any reason that if you prefer to interact with the text electronically that you couldn't do so. So the books are The Awakening and Selected Short Stories by Kate Chopin. Basically, as you will soon see, we are going to be reading two pieces by Kate Chopin. That book includes other pieces by Kate Chopin. But the pieces we will be talking about in class, one is a short story called The Story of an Hour, and I'll be providing that link for you. The other is a novella. A novella is longer than a short story, but not as long as a novel. And it's called The Awakening. Those are the two pieces that we will be studying by Kate Chopin. Another text I ordered for us was Final Harvest, Emily Dickinson Poems, um, Editor Johnson. And one of the things we'll talk about with Emily Dickinson is that we want to make sure that we're reading the correct version of her poetry. Um, the Johnson version does give the correct version with irregular capitalization and use of dashes. Sometimes you'll see Emily Dickinson's poetry where it's been corrected, if such a thing is even possible with poetry, um, to follow grammatical and, and, and standardized punctuation conventions. So you want to make sure that you're reading the original Emily Dickinson. The Johnson text definitely is one. I'm including a link um, to some, not all, but many of Emily Dickinson's poems um, that are in her original format. Frankenstein, and that was written by Mary Shelley, and that's something that perhaps not everyone knows, that Frankenstein, which is very iconic from a pop culture perspective, um, and I'm, I'm very interested in pop culture. In fact, I even teach a uh, communications class in horror film um, where we talk a little bit about Frankenstein, but um, most people don't usually f associate Frankenstein with a female author or having feminist issues within it, and it does, um, by Mary Shelley, and I'll be providing you with a link for that. 
um, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. And I'll also be providing you with the link of that. Um, there are some slave narratives that exist, and almost always they are from the male perspective. This is from the female perspective. Jane Eyre, very famous text. Charlotte Bronte, um, the longest text of the semester. Um, but perhaps it goes more quickly than persuasion. Persuasion isn't as long as Jane Eyre, but it... Um, Definitely doesn't have as much action within it. Uh, Persuasion by Jane Austen, where we get to see the lifestyles of basically the um, very privileged and the very wealthy. Um, and the fact that it moves slowly perhaps gives us an illustration of what lifestyles were like and are like maybe for um, individuals who have way too much time on their hands and um, way too much comfort. Now, the course description is from the course catalog, so I'll read it to you, that this is a study of works by women writers through the 19th century, and we'll discuss literature in various genres, mostly novel, but we'll also talk about short story and poetry within the historical and social context of the times in relation to early literary movements and from the perspective of a unique female literary tradition. There is a prerequisite for this class at JCC. We call that English Composition 2, English 112, 114, or 116, or its equivalent in another institution. In other words, you've already taken an introduction to literature class where you've learned how to respond to literature from an academic perspective. So now we're specializing in a particular area of literature. This happens to be women in literature. Our student learning outcomes for the class. The first is to read, critically examine, and appreciate the literary voices of British and American women in the 19th century. That's not to say that there weren't female authors from other locales, but usually when we talk about the literary canon, those works considered by scholars and critics worthy of academic study, um, we usually talk about the British and the American traditions. And you'll notice that the word critically is used a lot in academia um, and not in terms of being negative as in being critical, um, but basically analyzing, interpreting, asking lots of questions, which is what I say toddlers do very well. They ask perhaps the most important question of all, why? Um, and there are a multiplicity of answers. I've oftentimes said high school is about what and college is about why. Um, but I, I suggest that learning how to read and discuss critically is less about doing something new, but going back to something that we perhaps did quite naturally when we were quite young and filled with um, curiosity and questions. Um, to identify major themes and issues in 19th century women's literature. Obviously, we can't read everything, um, but even with the pieces that we're reading, as select as they are, you will begin to see patterns and themes. To see the relationship between 19th century women's literature and our present day worlds. And the idea is that for a piece of literature um, to be considered um, worthy of academic study, it's got a kind of a timeless and universal appeal. So even though these pieces were written in the past, they still have a lot of relevance to our present and likely will have relevance to our future and to improve oral and written communication skills. I put that on all of my syllabi. I mostly teach English classes, that makes sense. But as I indicated, I also teach communication classes and I also teach personal communication classes, um, things like public speaking and um, interpersonal communications. So I teach a, a wide variety of courses. English 247 offers a general introduction to the content and techniques of 19th century women's literature. Representative literary works will be studied. This course emphasizes critical thinking, critical reading, and critical writing. And as a class, we will strive to appreciate the aesthetic and literary merits of 19th century women's literature. So course procedures. So I teach both face-to-face -face and online classes. And in my online classes, I try to duplicate as much as possible what I would do in a face-to-face -face class. Of course, with the limitations of uh, that uh, the online experience uh, presents. 
So our procedures is that I will post a video discussing class content, much like this video, during the times that our class would normally meet. We would normally meet in a face-to-face -face class on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. So you can expect to find a video like this one every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. Um, honestly, I'm going to hope to post that the night beforehand, but certainly by Tuesday, Thursday at 9 a.m., you should be able to access that video. And then you have 48 hours to watch the video for that class and to answer its corresponding attendance question in our class discussion form. So at the ending of every video, I'm going to have a question for you, usually questions that don't have right or wrong answers. I'm more interested in your reasoning than I am in the actual answer itself. And that would count as, quote, attendance, unquote, as if you were in a face-to-face -face class. And certainly, you know, if you need an extension, uh, additional time after the 48 hours, ask me for an extension, I'll grant you one. But the summer session is obviously condensed, so you want to be able to keep up as much as possible. So your response is counted as attendance for that class. Now, all of you will be doing that, and any additional interaction you have with your classmates in that discussion form, I consider class participation, similar to the way that you would participate in a live class. So you aren't required to do that. I know that some students learn best by participating, others learn best by listening, or in our case, reading. So you can decide how much or how little um, to interact with your classmates. You should, however, read all the discussion form responses from your classmates, and I'm going to be responding to all of those discussion form responses as well. So if you read all of your classmates' responses and all of my responses, you'll get a good idea of what we could have discussed in the class discussion if we were meeting face-to-face. -face. And then, of course, we have the traditional assignments, which for us include two papers and the final examination, which I'll talk a little bit more about. Um, and you will be sending that to my email because that's how my grading program works best. Um, I ask that you send that via PDF to Ruiz, R-U-I-Z, at gcc.mass.edu so I can evaluate that for you. So the course requirements, it, pretty straightforward that you should complete all reading and writing assignments by the due date. And there is a good amount of reading in this class, so I encourage you to start early right now. Um, we will have two out-of-class papers assigned, the first about midway through the summer session, and I have rolling deadlines, so I encourage you to submit an early work. Um, and the second paper will be due at the ending of the semester. Again, I encourage you to submit an early work. The idea is that the first paper would be addressing the first set of readings we would do in the semester. Your second paper would address the second set of readings we would do in the semester. And then there's a cumulative final examination, an essay examination, and it's open book, open notes. If we were taking that exam in a face-to-face -face situation, you'd have two or three hours to um, take that exam. Um, obviously, again, we're not in a face-to-face -face situation, so you'll have 24 hours to respond, and I don't ask you to spend 24 hours working on it. I ask you to spend two or three hours working on it, but basically, that's a way for you to synthesize everything we've talked about in the class. And I know this is a lot of information. I don't expect you to remember it all, um, which is why you can review the syllabus, the course outline, and this video. But I wanted to give you just a, an overview today about what we will be doing. There is also an institutional services disability statement. So if you are a returning student to GCC, you're probably familiar with this. Greenfield Community College values inclusion equal access to its programs and activities, and is committed to fostering an environment of respect and full participation. Our goal is to create learning environments that are equitable, inclusive, and welcoming. So if there are aspects of the instruction or design of this course that result in barriers to your inclusion or accurate assessment or achievement, please notify me as soon as possible. And if you're a student with a disability, and you may need reasonable academic accommodations, please contact the Office of Disability Services as soon as possible. And you'll see that I've given their email address and also their phone number. So attendance. Obviously, class activity and discussion is important and really can't be made up. So 
absences not participating in your class discussion form are negatively reflected in your participation grade. And while each case is different, anything more than one absence could lower your grade. So you could miss one form, but then after that, um, it could have impact. You do not need to notify me that you are going to be absent for a particular class or miss a particular form. However, do contact me if you're missing multiple forms or missing multiple classes, which again, I'm evaluating through your discussion form responses. Consultations, as I had said, you can meet with me by appointment. Papers, and most of the information that I've given on the syllabus about papers are just about formatting. Um, basically, what you are going to be doing is writing an approximately four to five page paper. I'll give you some suggested paper topics, but you can also create your own as long as you have them approved by me. You'll be writing a critical paper, which means that you won't be needing to use outside resources. And you have the option of revising the first paper, which is due approximately midway through the semester. I see that first paper is a kind of learning exercise. Um, so I evaluate the paper and put a letter grade on it. And then at that point, if you're content, then you're done with the exercise. But if you wanted to try to improve your grade, you could incorporate my comments into a revision. And if you needed further direction, you could always meet with me. And then I just ask that you submit in the original graded copy along with your revision and you would get the higher of the two grades. So the first grade or the lower grade would initially disappear. Again, I, I see this as a learning exercise. This is the way published authors write as they go through lots of revisions. Now, that said, the second paper is due at, by the ending of the semester so that if you hand it in at the ending of the semester, there wouldn't be time necessarily to do a revision. But my thinking is that you wouldn't need to because you already would have learned how to write a paper through the first exercise. That said, there's a slight possibility that you might be able to rewrite paper number two if you submitted it in early enough. We would have to negotiate, but everybody has the option of rewriting the first paper. So basically what I've indicated is that papers are due on the day specified. Papers should be typed and double spaced and one inch and have one inch margins. I hope this sounds familiar to you through your um, introductory literature class and introductory composition classes. Your pages should be numbered and I'm asking that you please include a cover page with your paper. Cover pages just list the paper title, your name, the course and section number, my name, and the due date. Doesn't necessarily matter how you format that. Late work will lower your grade by one full grade. No late paper will be accepted after one week has elapsed unless you've made other arrangements with me beforehand. So again, keep me apprised if it turns out that you can't make a due date. Please be sure to keep a copy of the paper for yourself. Always a good idea. And as I indicated, I'll distribute paper assignments um, shortly, but you can also create your own assignment as long as you get it approved by me. And that you do have the option of revising the first paper. Do consult with me prior to revising a paper. That's always a good way to proceed. Um, late work can't be revised, so it's always a good idea to ask for an extension. If you do that, it's no longer late. So I'm gonna skip the section on plagiarism and talk about this next class and instead go to grading. And these are approximate percentages. So basically 25% um, is participation. So that's your attendance, your class assignment and activities and so forth. 25% is paper number one, that four to five page critical paper that you have the option of revising. Paper number two is 25%. Again, a four to five page critical paper probably would not have the option to revise. 25% the final examination. So this is an essay exam and it is open book, open notes. And the grading scale, as I'm sure you're probably familiar with, A is excellent, B good, C satisfactory. I prefer not to think about the letters that follow C. Um, especially on the first day of class. So we'll just let that be. And as you can see, if you're reading along with me, that there is a criteria for essay evaluation about what an A or a B or a C or even a D or an F 
would look like, which we can talk about further as the semester progresses. So I just wanted you to know that that was there. And then I wanted to talk about the course outline. And the course outline basically gives you the schedule of the assignments and readings throughout the entire semester. And you'll note at the top, I've indicated that dates and assignments may be subject to change. And that the readings, ideally, the life isn't always ideal, I know that, should be done prior to the date assigned. So today, as you can see in week one, um, and I'm labeling this as Thursday the 23rd, even though you may be watching this on the Wednesday or even Tuesday night. It's just introduction when I review the class. So by Tuesday's class on the 28th, which again, I'll have a video posted by 9 a.m. if not before, you will find that I will be discussing a piece called The Cult of True Womanhood. It happens to be an academic essay that I was able to find the link for. This gives us a sense a little bit of the history of the time through the lens of periodicals. So oftentimes you can use things from popular culture such as magazines in order to get a sense of people's values and expectations. Um, and I think that this article does that quite nicely. And there also is the short story that I wanted to talk about by Kate Chopin, The Story of an Hour. This is in The Awakening and Selected Stories by Kate Chopin um, on page 217 if you're using the edition that I had ordered. Or you can also access it through the website or through another source where you might have The Story of an Hour by Kate Chopin. So you should have ideally all of that read before you listen to my presentation on Tuesday. It'll make a lot more sense. And then you'll see that we are on Thursday moving to Frankenstein. And we have two classes devoted to Frankenstein. It is a longer text. And what would be ideal is that you would have finished Frankenstein in its entirety before Thursday the 30th so that these class videos and our class discussion forms make sense to you. Um, but again, I know things aren't always ideal, but I encourage you to get ahead in the reading so that by the 30th, if you have finished Frankenstein, you can actually begin the next text, which is persuasion. So by the time we begin talking about persuasion on the 6th, you've read that in its entirety and you're at home reading the next text, which happens to be Jane Eyre and so on and so forth. But you can see we've got two classes devoted to Frankenstein um, on, the, on the 30th of May and the 4th of June. And then we've got two classes devoted to Persuasion on the 6th of June and the 11th of June. And then on the 13th of June is when I am going to be beginning to discuss Jane Eyre. That's the longest text, as I said, but it probably moves the most quickly. And I've also got the class on the 18th devoted to Jane Eyre. Now, by the 18th of June, that puts us into week five of the semester. And by that point, I'm hopeful that everybody would have submitted in paper number one, um, if not prior to that. By that point, we would have discussed possible paper topics, how to go about writing a paper, and so forth and so on. If you haven't submitted in a paper by the 18th, I'm beginning to get a bit anxious because there isn't much left to the semester. There are only eight weeks in our semester, not 16. So after Jane Eyre, we're going to read some of Emily Dickinson's poetry. That's on the 20th. And I'm not going to assign any particular poem. Actually, what I'm going to do is ask you to choose a poem that you find interesting or in one way or another worth discussion um, from Emily Dickinson. And as I indicated, I had assigned um, the text of Emily Dickinson's poetry in the way that it was originally written. Um, so you could leaf through that and find a poem. I've also assigned a website that you could look through to find an Emily Dickinson poem. You may already have an Emily Dickinson poem that you are fond of, and you can discuss that. My assumption is that everybody will pick a different poem to discuss in the discussion form, and that'll give us an opportunity to read a good handful of her poems, depending on the number of students that we have in our class. So. 
um, you'll get at least a little taste of Emily Dickinson. Oh, excuse me, that was my cuckoo clock. And then on um, the 25th, which is week six, we'll be reading Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. And again, I have included a link. Week seven is when we get close to finishing up the class. On the 2nd of July, we begin the novella, The Awakening. And on the 4th of July, that's a holiday that falls on a Thursday. So we wouldn't have a class posted on that date. But we would have a class on the 9th, which is Tuesday, to complete The Awakening. And then our last class, which is on the 11th of July. That's a Thursday. What I will be doing is posting the final examination at 9 o'clock a.m. And I will give you 24 hours in which to respond to that final. And you should spend approximately two-ish hours or so on it. And you can submit in that final by the 12th at 9 a.m. Paper number two, if you haven't handed it in yet, is also going to be due by the 11th at 9 a.m. So the idea is that you've handed in the paper before you do the final so that you can just concentrate on your final examination. And that basically is the class as a whole. So what I've done is I've given you a sense through the syllabus and the course outline of what it is that we'll be doing over the course of the semester, but I'll be revisiting all of these pieces as they become applicable. And certainly if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me so that I can clarify things for you. So what's left for today is basically you're responding to our attendance question, as I call it, on our discussion form. And today's attendance question is about introduction. So I'm just going to ask you to introduce yourself to your classmates in our class discussion form. And you're free to upload things such as audio or video or pictures, but you're not required to. But this would be a good way for us to get to know one another. And as I indicated, you're not required to respond to your classmates, um, but you are required to read your classmates' responses. So um, those are due um, 48 hours after posting. So let's assume that this is our Thursday class. So that would be due by Saturday. So that said, um, if all goes well, by Sunday, you should be able to read all of the, your classmates' responses and get a good idea of who's in the class. And I also will be responding, as I indicated, to all of you. So you can read my responses in turn. So what we will do, as I indicated next class, is we will talk about the cult of true womanhood, which gives us a sense of what life was like in the 1800s for female. We will read the short story, The Story of an Hour by Kate Chopin and discuss that. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of the class requirements. So I hope you're doing well. And I'm doing well, and we will continue on next week. You can look forward to a video by Tuesday at 9 a.m. Take care. Bye-bye.